um, we're still on our, an Ayurvedic theme. Ayurveda is the medicine side of yoga, but it's a whole science in itself. Um, and it looks at things slightly differently, but that is a very simplified explanation. Uh, so this is a very classic and traditional um, aspect of yoga. So just lift and roll the shoulders, this opens the gateways. If anything flags up that you want to mention to me, please say, and just set your hands up, clasp, reverse, press your feet down, stretch up, and then breathing out, go to one side, breathing in, come to the center, stretch, and breathing out, go to the other side, come back to the center and stretch. Straight away we're going to test our balance by coming lifting the heels. If your heels wobble, don't worry, just come straight back down again and just turn slightly to one side. Come to the center and turn slightly to the other side. And then come to the center. Just release the arms to shoulder height and breathing out, turn to look beyond the finger of one hand or hold your hands on your waist, I can see your compromise, Rosie. Come to the center, and then breathing out, turn to look beyond the fingers of the other hand. Come back to the center and lower the hands. Lift and roll shoulders. Slide the hands down to your shins. Press the hands into the shins and lengthen along from the tailbone to the top of the head. Chin slightly tucks in. Breathing out, bend the knees and open the elbows out to the side. Breathe in, lengthen the um, along the tailbone, half lift. And as you breathe out, stay here. Breathe in, press your feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Lift and roll the shoulders. Clasp your hands behind you, aim the knuckles towards the ground, and this will open you at the shoulder level. Breathing out, turn to the left. Breathe in, come to the center. And breathe out, turn to the other side. And then come to the center. Release the hands, lift and roll the shoulders. And then either hold your wrists, or hold your elbows, or if you're able to, reverse prayer behind your back. That really stretches the outside of your hands mm -hmm. and opening the elbows out. That might not be possible. Turn to the left, come to the center, turn to the right, come to the center, release the hands, and then stretching up and breathing out, lowering down. I just wanted to focus on this hand thing. You did reverse prayer. Mm. It's one of the meridians. I have a feeling it's the lung. I'm desperately trying to think in Chinese medicine. It's either the lung or the heart. Um, just going up. But it's one of the, I've got a feeling, it's one of the meridians that we don't use and it can go out of you, so it's quite a shock when you suddenly put your hands behind your back and you think, I can't do that, because it's, 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 it's a loss of usage that you don't notice happening. Um, so we're coming to a midsummer, so the midsummer um, aspect, um, dipping into Chinese, having said Ayurveda, is the heart and the small intestines. So cross your right foot over your left, Raise your hands and hold. I'm, I'm so bad. So I'm holding my left wrist and I'm going over to the right, but that doesn't feel right. If I go to the left, that feels more of a stretch. Does that feel more of a stretch to you? Yeah. Um, change your wrists as well and see if that feels better to hold the right wrist or not. It's more of a stretch. Really the the foot wrist, that's in yeah, front. Stretching. Stretching. And yeah. then just come upwards. 
release. And of course, we're going to go to the other side. Left foot over right. Raise the hands up. Hold your wrist. So I'm just. You can go either side, but one side feels better than the other. So this goes into the small intestine, and the small intestine and the heart come back up to the centre and release your hands and just release your foot. Your heart and the small intestine work together in Chinese meridian, and it's very much associated with the um, heat of the summer. So then just lift and roll your shoulders and raising your hands up. Clasp and reverse. This appears to be very similar. Go laterally to one side, come to the centre, and laterally to the other side, come to the centre. Rotate slightly to one side, come to the centre, and rotate to the other side, come to the centre. Lower your palms, and you might want to step your feet out as you carry on lowering. Now you go as low or as high as you want to. So I know Patsy there will be doing literally, she'll be on her heels, literally down to the ground. But for the rest of us, this might be enough. But if you want to really come down, that's fine. Um, but wherever you are, just turn towards your left foot. Come to the centre with your hands and turn towards your right foot. Come to the centre with your hands and if you've opened your feet, straighten them and hold behind your calves, pulling in. It's almost like a skiing um, movement. That's my phone. Oh, is it? Don't worry. And then, or if you need to answer it, that's fine too. Press your feet down into the ground as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And then just lift and roll the shoulders. And then again, you might want to have your feet hit with the part. And this flying aspect, which might look ridiculous, but it is using all your joints. So your, where you start, so your um, ankles, your knees, your, um, all your, all the muscles, all the ribs here are moving as you're, breathing in, you're coordinating your movement with your breath, you've turned to the arms, and your shoulders, your elbows, your wrists, your fingers if you want to involve them, and then just release your hands back down again. And I said about, um, going out of usage and don't really notice it. This is another one where you're just circling your hands like that. I don't know if you think about it, it does mm -hmm. your mind in. But again, you're just mm -hmm. going onto parts of the wrists that you're not really aware go out of use. Mm. You've always assumed that that's flexible, and then all of a sudden, perhaps it's not. And then, if you want to go around the other way, <laughs> it's just yeah. And also, it, it, it mucks up with your mind as well yeah. because your mind can't sort of think about it. it. Just go around it as well. And then just drop your hands and carry on the mind thing. Raise. I'm going to raise my right hand and just circle the wrists, and your wrists will go naturally one way. <coughs> um, it's mind, it's engaging the mind, and then circle the other way. And then dropping the hands and going with the other. So again, you're coming into the mind not that we're aware of it, the mind kind of sort of works all out automatically and then just release and just lift and roll the shoulders. So breathing in, turning to your head to the left, your hands can just rest underneath or hold your thighs. Breathing out, turn to the right. Breathing in, moving your head to the left. 
and breathing out, turning your head to the right. And one more time, breathing in, turning your head to the left. And breathing out, turning your head to the right. And come back to the center. And then bringing your hands just below your navel. This hopefully will encourage us to uh, stand up, not straight, but into your posture. And then breathing in, almost, it's going to your magnetic field, breathing out, just bring your hands back down to below the navel, Hara or Dantian. Dantian in Chinese, Hara in the um, uh, yoga tradition. Breathing and it becomes a mindful and breath work exercise as well as getting into magnetic field. And then breathing in. Breathing in, hands up. And then almost like sun rays, just circle the wrists down. And once more, circling up and circling down. And then open the fingers. For any of you who've been working hard on uh, um, projects, I'm thinking of Patsy here with all her, you can see all her material in the background there, which she's been doing her like, Beth play, all lovely costumes and then just release, lift and roll the shoulders, bringing the hands to the heart. Then this connects into the heart, we looked at the small intestine. Breathing in, circling the hands up, bringing your hands through the centre as you breathe out, bending the knees, and bringing the hands to the shins. Breathe in, lengthen from the tailbone to the top of the head, Breathe out, soften your knees. Breathe in, lengthen, half lift. Stay here as you breathe out. And breathing in, press your feet down as you roll up vertebra by vertebra. Circling the hands up, hold the thumbs together and just very gently sway from side to side. Swaying palm. And then bring your hands together at the heart centre. And we're going to come down to lying on the mat. Now the weather's not quite so hot, people aren't quite so, now uh, what's the word, ecstatic to get down. But um, anyway, coming to lie on mat, and we're going to be. Um, Lying flat, legs out, which is unusual for us. Are you all right space-wise? Are you all right? Yes, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, okay. 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 Behind, yeah. Because I can move further to no, the don't worry. I'm absolutely fine. Okay, and then just very gently circle the ankles. In one direction and then circle the ankles in the other direction. And then just release the heels, the feet, let them drop out. So if there is space consideration, you can always bend your arm at the elbow, not stretch fully out, but extending your right heel and as you breathe in, bending the right elbow, stretching up above you, you, depending on space, you can keep the elbow bent, or if you would like to stretch your right arm up, stretch it out. Breathing out, turn your head to the left, away from your right outstretched arm. When you're ready, bring your head back to the center. And on your next exhalation, lower your arm and release and relax your right foot. And then extending the left heel, left toes to the ceiling, 
Breathing in, stretch your left arm up. You can keep it bent at the elbow. Breathing out, turn your head away from your outstretched left arm. Breathing in, bring your head back to the center. And breathing out, lower your left arm and relax your left foot. Bend up both knees and both feet are on the floor, hip width apart. And just get into the pose very gently by swaying both knees a little bit from side to side. Just going over the lower back, almost sacral area. And as you sway your knees, if you sway them enough, you'll go over a major acupressure point, almost at the top of your bottom, which is very satisfying. If you had a tennis ball, you'd be putting a tennis ball there. It really is getting into that part. And then just bring your knees to the center. And just make small circles. Your knees will move. You're circling on your sacrum. It's a size probably of a 50 pence piece. Your knees will move to accommodate this movement. But you're just moving the knees in the same direction and making a little circle. And then reverse the circle in the other direction. And then just come to the center again. Hug your left knee into your chest, but do feel free to make any adjustments to your right um, foot if you need to. And holding your left knee, just make little circles with your left knee in one direction. And then make little circles with your left knee in the other direction. So I mentioned about almost losing um, mobility. Uh, we all do without even being aware of it. And in the hips, this is one of the safest things that you can do to keep ro full rotational movement in the hip. Hug the left knee into the chest and drop your hands to underneath your left thigh and gradually extend your left foot up to the ceiling and extend your left heel and point and flex your left foot a couple of times. And then begin to walk your hands up the back of your left leg, bringing your left leg and foot slightly towards you stop before your tummy domes or your chin is shooting up to the ceiling and if you want to go further in this pose the next step would be to hold and support your head and neck with your right hand perhaps and breathing out lift your head slightly up towards your outstretched left leg Release your head back down to the floor. Hug your knees, your left knee into your chest. And still supporting the left knee, open the knee to the left, placing the left ankle on top of the right thigh. And your hands can either rest on your abdomen or place your hands, palms down on the floor. And just very gently let both knees sway from side to side. They'll move in the same direction. This figure of four, or upside down pigeon, is also very helpful for hip health. And it targets a little muscle called the piriformis muscle. I'm not technical here, but it joins sort of the thigh bone to the, the hip, and it can often be implicated in lower back issues. So this becomes, again, a quite a simple 
way to release that, although some people can't cross their legs like this. And then just very gently supporting your left knee as you hug your left knee into your chest again and then place your left foot back onto the floor. And then just swaying your knees with hands either palms down or resting on your abdomen from side to side. And then make any adjustments that you need to with your left foot and focus on the right side as you hug the right knee into the chest. I mentioned Ayurveda, the medicine side of yoga, and this hugging the knee into the chest targets a particular energy. Just begin to circle the knee while you're holding it in one direction. And your circle can be tiny or it can come to be quite large, and the choice is up to you. Um, this energy is called uh, Apana energy. It's one of the five energies, and it's a foundational energy. But the seat of Apana is in the lower abdominal area, um, and that connects into, in Ayurveda, the representation of the elements in our body, the doshas, and it connects into the vata dosha. And vata is very much air orientated. So this hugging the knee into the chest represents a release of pain. And it is like a fetal position that we kind of adopt the first your circle. So it should be deeply soothing. And when we walk or, I don't know, play sport or tennis or whatever, the hips are moving, but they're not often moving in this full rotational movement, which is where you don't use it properly. It slightly contracts with time, and then it pulls the muscle fractionally, and that's where people can um, have hip issues. And then hugging the right knee into the chest, dropping the hands below the right thigh, and very gently extending the right foot up to the ceiling. And if you extend your right heel, you'll feel a lovely stretch along the back of the right leg. Point and flex your feet, your right foot a couple of times. Your knee can always retain a softness about it, a slight bend. And then walk the hands up the back of the right thigh. bringing the right leg towards the face. If you found that your chin has shut up to the ceiling, you've gone too far, just lower your hands. And then there's an option to either stay here or perhaps drop your hand behind your head, one hand, and supporting your head and neck, breathing out, lift your head up fractionally towards your outstretched right leg. This engages the core slightly and then just release and relax your head back down to the ground. Hug your right knee into the chest again. And supporting the right knee, open the right knee to the right and relax your left ankle on top of your um, left thigh. Hands either palms down alongside you or resting on your abdomen. As you just gently sway your knees from side to side. Coming into that piriformis on the other side, but you're also opening the um, groin fractionally at the lower level of the lymphatic system. So it has um, quite a boosting um, effect, very gentle and easy to do, provided you cross your one leg over the other. And then just very gently come to the centre and hug your right knee into your chest. Keep your right knee hugged into your chest and let your left knee join it so that now both knees are hugging into the chest. And just very gently rock from side to side 
And again, like everything in yoga, how much you want to rock from side to side is up to you. You can rock a little bit, or you can almost rock onto the backs of your arms, your upper arms, almost onto your elbows. And you'll find that you're also, um, back of the skull is just slightly rolling on the mat as well. Which is, again, quite beneficial. You've got some acupressure points on the back of the skull. We don't ever think of that area. But then just come gently to the center and back to your Aparastha uh, posture, hugging both knees into the chest. Still hold your knees, let both knees drift away. Hug both knees into the chest and let both knees drift away. Carry on doing this. If you enjoy hugging the knees into the chest and that lovely massage in your lower back, then stay with this. But if you wanted to add a core awareness into this um, Apanasana posture, instead of using your hands to hug your knees into the chest, let your hands rest lightly on your knees and let the tummy or the abdominal muscles do the work which I don't like at all, but then my core's not great. But if you just let your um, tummy do the work, it's really quite a deep pull to, um, onto your lower abdominal area. So again, the choice is entirely yours. If you're interested, yogically, um, classically, you would just lightly rest your fingers on the knees and let the core do the work and then just hugging the knees into the chest. And slide your hands down to your shins, opening your knees fractionally. You might be holding your ankle bone. You've got this opening of the inner groin, again into the low lymphatic system. And then just um, place your right foot on the floor and either hold your ankle, or if you can drop your hand to hold either the inside or the outside of your foot. Again, you're very welcome to hold your shin to half happy baby on the left side. So just take the support where you feel that you can. So the knee aimed towards the floor, just opening the hip in a slightly different way. I've got both hands supporting my left leg here. And then just very gently place the left foot onto the floor. Hug the right knee into the chest. And it's your version of half happy baby on the right side. So whether that's holding the th thigh, calf, whether it, not the thigh, the calf, whether it's holding the ankle, whether it's holding the foot inside or outside. Yoga classically is you hold the foot from the inside with the fingers going out, which is harder than the other way around. But again, it's just opening the hip in a slightly different way. And then just very gently hugging both knees into the chest once more. Both soles of the feet to the ceiling and arms up like a bug to the ceiling, not behind you this time. Hug both knees into the chest. And then the bug, soles of the feet to the ceilings, hands up to the uh, ceiling. And then hug both knees into the chest. And take the time, we're going to come to a seated position. You can roll, it, it depends where the space is. Ideal is to roll to the right, away from the heart. But if not, come to seat it however works for you. Anyone with dodgy knees can sit with their legs out in front of them. Anyone with non-dodgy knees can sit in a cross-legged position. And holding the knees, or just resting the hands if you've got your hands out. Breathe in, sit up. Breathe out, rounding, chin to chest that calming, of, of, of activating the vagus nerve, sitting up and breathing out. 
breathing in and breathing out, rounding chin to chest. Breathing in and breathing out. Come to sit up and then just gently swirl in a circle, holding your knees or below the knees to support you. Now your circle can be tiny, depends on your back, depends on lots of things, or it can be quite wide. You decide. So swirling like this is working on the lower abdominal level again. The first cat cow up and down that we were doing worked on the base chakra at the tailbone. Just reverse your swirling circle. You can um, dip down, you can swirl up. This is working on the second chakra, the um, lower abdominal level. And this is a chakra that you need to balance for people with addictions, whether it's too much work, too much substance, whatever. It's um, where it's believed the addictions come. So this is balancing this chakra. And then just sitting up. Take your left hand to your right knee, right hand behind. As you breathe in, lengthen your body and breathe out. Turn to look towards your right shoulder. Breathing in, lengthen and breathing out. Turn to look to the right. Breathing in and out. Come back to the centre. Just slightly nod forward for a nanosecond. Come to sit upright again and then take your right hand to your left, left hand behind. That depends on your arm length. I've got long arms, but you can dome your fingers or just however works for you. Breathing in length and breathing out. Turn to look towards or over your left shoulder. Breathing in lengthen your spine and breathing out. Turn. So I mentioned the energies, um, and this particular energy is the third energy, it's called Samana energy, it works around the navel area. Come to the centre, and just gently walk your fingertips slightly forward. Feel that you are lengthening along your spine, and then that you're coming forward. So after any um, twist or series of rotations, it's always good to come forward to compensate or balance the spine. You'll feel this in the hips. And then walking the hands back, and we're coming up to the heart space. So breathing in, and the heart space comes in back to the summer. Breathing out, chin to chest. Breathing in, hands out. Breathing out, hands come back. Breathing in, hands out. And breathing out, chin chest. And one more time. In and then out. Drop your hands either to your knees if that works whatever works for you. And we come to the throat. So lots of things you can do for the throat. Breathing in, turn your head to the left. Breathing out, turn your head to the right. In to the left. And out to the right. And as you keep doing that, this also um, not only looks at the throat and the neck movement, but it's looking at the thyroid and the parathyroid. And the thyroid, my understanding is that particularly with, we mentioned menopause, where things can go a bit haywire, and our continued stress from further down, exhausted adrenal glands can lead to various autoimmune conditions 
from the exhausted adrenals and it kind of comes through the thyroid. I might need to chat further with you on that, Charlotte. You're going to deny so no, I'm not doing anything about that. But um, anyway, um, so, and you're also balancing the brain hemispheres. The reason we're going slowly is if we went very dizzily, or too quickly you'd go dizzy, you're coordinating your movement with your breath. And there's like a lot of fluid in us. So again, if you go too quickly, you're, you're just slowly, you're giving your body a chance to adapt. So this very simple movement is incredibly beneficial. And then come to the center, and we're going to, that was the thyroid and parathyroid, which is part of our metabolic rebalancing uh, system. And this then looks at the pituitary and pineal, which is the other part of the master and glandular control, there are big cautions on throwing your head back. So it's a very gentle invitation to lift the chin, lifting the chin slightly, and then breathing out, lowering the chin to the chest. So you breathe out. Lifting the chin with control, and breathing out, lowering chin to chest. If you want to further improve safety, you can always put your hand on the chest and think of yourself like the cobra that lengthens as it lifts its head, hooded head up and then breathing out lower. The problem comes where people throw their heads back without any thought and the head is heavy and that's where all these neck issues can come in. And then last time as you bring your head chin up and then And then come to the eyes, the window of the soul. Look ahead, keep your head still, and like an imaginary clock, bring your eyes only up to your 12 o'clock. Bring your eyes down to your six o'clock. Bring the eyes to the center and go across to your three o'clock. Come to the center and go to your nine o'clock come to the center. Raise your eyes back up to your 12 o'clock and very slowly trace around your imaginary clock, noting where you jump. Try and make it a smooth circle. I have a tendency to jump, which I've just done around 20 past, 25 past. When you've come back to the center, just blink, go back to 12 and of course, the invitation is to go anti-clockwise. The eye is a muscle like anything else in the body. There are muscles there, not the eye itself, but the muscles supporting the eye and subject to our mood and stress and diet. And then very, very gently rubbing the hands together. You're creating electricity points in the nadis of the hands. And just place the hands over the eyes, opening the eyes into the darkness of the hands. It's called palming. Should be very smoothing and just trace your hands off your eyes. And then we come to the third eye, just taking the fingers of either one hand, just very, very gently tracing your fingers across from temple to temple, always in the same direction. Doesn't matter which way where you go, but just stick with the same direction. So the third eye um, is believed in Eastern philosophy to connect into the center of uh, intuition and knowledge. And if you just go a little bit beyond the third, um, beyond the temples, there's a, the temple is that dent, and that dent carries on above the ears so that is to connect it to our hearing. It's a hearing chakra. It's not one of the major ones. You can just massage around there. If you had a ski hat, it would be where the ski hat rim kind of might sit. And then just dropping your hands below your ears, just to massage behind your jaw. That connects to the ears and the eyes. And then we don't often think about this, but the ear lobes are said to almost be like a reflexology of the hands and the feet are. So you could just very gently pinch the tops of your ears between your thumb and your second finger like that, 
and just release and just work down the outer rim of the ear. And it's said that where it's slightly sore, so you know, just the centre of the ears, like you've got the lungs and then you go down to the intestines and the, the, going down to the bottom of the lobe is the bottom of the body, is just, again, and if you find a sore point, you can just massage around that ear point. And then just release the hands. And just turn your palms up. Imagine a flower. So if you were yogically um, uh, into your philosophy, it would be a lotus flower. Any flower will do, your favorite flower. And as you breathe in, just open the petals of your left hand flower. Breathing out, bring the petals together as the thumb lightly touches the fingers. Breathe in as you softly open the petals of your right hand, the right hand flower. And breathing out, just let the petals gently fold, closing together. Breathing in on the left hand, subtly opening. Breathing out, closing your left flower. And then on your right flower. And closing. And then carry on in your own breath pattern for a few rounds. system, lowering blood pressure, anxiety, everything slows down muscles generally, relax. If you found at home that you with a strain to sit up, you can always lie down with your knees bent. It's not the classic breath posture, but it's very nice to just relax everything. And then just very gently bring your breath to a close. And take a moment to have a thought for the day, your Sankalpa. It can be for yourself or for anyone close to you or not close to you, wishing someone well. And think that thought a couple of times and then let that thought go. The intention has been set. And then very gently come back to the summer theme, but we often do this anyway, bringing the hands to the heart, just lowering the chin to the chest. Take a bow for yourself. To have a very lovely day ahead. Thank you.